In this video, we're going to go through two examples where we write the equation of a quadratic. And so we're given a table and we want to try to establish, you know, is this a quadratic function and how do we find the a, b, and c values so that we can write it in that uh, standard form of a quadratic. So the first thing we want to do is notice how these x values are increasing by one each time. We can use a method called finite differences to figure out whether this is a first degree, second degree, third degree polynomial, et cetera. And the way you would do that is you would subtract these y values. And what I like to do is you want to make sure you're consistent. Either do the right minus the left, right minus the left, right minus left like that, or left minus right, left minus right, but you want to stay consistent. I always do the right minus the left. So 5 minus 11 uh, comes out to negative 6. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. And 11 minus 5 is 6. Now, if this was a linear equation, these would all be the same number. It would be going up at a constant rate. But in this case, it wasn't a constant number. Let's see if we can subtract again. Negative 2 minus negative 6 is 4. 2 minus negative 2 is 4, and 6 minus 2 is 4. So see how we're getting the same number? It doesn't matter what the number is. It's just that on the second time that we subtracted, that second order difference tells us that this is a second degree polynomial, a quadratic uh, polynomial. So what we're going to do here is now we're going to find out what are the a, b, and c values. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to write a system of equations. So let's go ahead and take uh, a few of these points. Let's say, for example, this point this point, and this point. So if y is 3, when x is 0, so let's do that. So when y is 3, when x is 0, 0 squared is 0 times a is 0, b times 0 is 0, and we have c. And so now you can see that c is equal to 3. OK, so now we know what c is. How do we solve for a and b? Well, let's go ahead and take this other point here. Let's say when y is 5, x is 1. So 5 equals a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. But in this case, I'm going to put 3 in for c here. So that's uh, one equation. We can solve for a and b, but when we have two variables, we need two equations. So let's go ahead and take this other point here. When y is 11, x is 2. So this is a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c, which c here is 3. So now if we simplify, let's see what we get here. We get uh, 1 squared is 1 times a is a. So let's write that down. Plus b times 1 is b, OK, plus 3. Now I'm going to subtract the 3 to the other side. So that's going to be equal to 5 minus 3, which is 2. And then for this equation, let's see, 4 squared, uh, 2 squared is 4 times a is 4a. And 2 times b is 2b. And the 3 I'm going to subtract over, that's 8. So this is going to equal 8. So now we've got our two equations, two variables. We just have to solve for a and b. If I multiply this top equation by negative 2, that's going to make this negative 2b. When we add it to this positive 2b, the b's are going to cancel. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to be negative 2a minus 2b uh, equals negative 4. And this equation we're going to keep the same, so that's 4a plus 2b is equal to 8. And now when we add, you can see the b's cancel. And we have 2a is equal to 4. So if we divide both sides by 2, you can see that a is equal to 2. And now all we have to do is plug this 2 back into any one of these two variable equations. Let's just do this one. So 2 plus b is equal to 2. If we subtract 2 from both sides, you can see that b is equal to 0. So now if we put it all back together, we have y is equal to a, which is 2, b, which is 0, and c is equal to 3, and we've got our quadratic equation. Now, sometimes I like to check it. I might pick another number, say, for example, when x is negative 1, does y equal 5? And yes, it looks like it does. So I just want to double check. Let's look at another example. Okay, see if you can pause the video and do this example number 2 on your own. We'll go through it together just so you get a little bit of practice. We've got this table here, and we notice that the x values are going up at a, a consistent rate here. They're going up by 1 each time. So let's look at the change in the y values. So if I do y2 minus y1 here, the second y minus this first y, I get 7. 23 minus 14 is 9. 
34 minus 23 is 11, and 47 minus 34 is 13. Now, we don't get that same number, so it's not a first degree equation. It's not, when we get that first order difference to be the same, that's like a first degree. It's not, so in this case, let's subtract a second time. Again, staying consistent, right minus left, nine minus seven is two, 11 minus nine is two, and 13 minus 11 is two. Now, notice we're getting the same number the second time that we subtract, that tells us it's a second degree uh, equation, and so we can write our quadratic equation here in this form. But we have to figure out what our a, b, and c are, so that means if we have three variables, we need three equations, right? So let's go ahead and use these three points right here. It doesn't matter which points you use. You can use the three, four, and five, or any, any pair, any three. So let's start with this one. So when y is seven, uh, x is one, so that's gonna be a, times x squared, x squared of course is just gonna be one squared, which is one, plus b times one, here I'll put the squared here, and then plus c, so that's one equation. Then let's go to the next point, so when y is 14, x is two, so that's two squared, plus b times two, plus c, and then let's take this one, when y is 23, uh, let's see, x is three, so that's three squared, plus b times three plus c. Okay, so three variables, three equations. Let's see if we can simplify these a little bit further here. A one squared we know is one, and two squared is four, and three squared is nine. So let's just rewrite this a little bit. Let me put them over here. We've got a plus b plus c is equal to seven. Four a plus two b plus c is equal to 14. And uh, let's see, nine a, plus 3b plus c is equal to 23. Now what we have to do is we have to pick a variable to eliminate, either the a's, the b's, or the c's. I think it's gonna be easiest to eliminate the c's because they're all uh, the same, they're one c. So let's say for example, if I take this equation, the middle one, and I subtract the first one. So 4a minus 1a is gonna give us 3a. I'll put it right here. And 2b minus 1b is 1b and c minus c is zero, and 14 minus seven is seven. Okay, so I use the first and second equation. I have to use the third equation. I can combine it with the second, or I can combine it with the first. Either way, it doesn't matter, uh, but we have to try to eliminate that same variable, that c. So I'm gonna do the third minus the second. So 9a minus 4a gives us 5a, 3b minus 2b gives us 1b, and c minus c is zero, and 23 minus 14 is nine. Okay, so now we're down to two variables, two equations, and we wanna eliminate either the A's or the B's. It looks like the B's are gonna be the easiest here. Let's just go ahead and take the bottom equation and we'll subtract the top equation. So 5A minus 3A is 2A, uh, B minus B is zero, and nine minus seven is two. So if we divide both sides by two, you can see that A is coming out to one. So now we went from three variables, three equations, to two variables, two equations, to one variable, one equation. Now we wanna work our way backwards and back substitute. So if A is one, let's put it right here. Three times one is three. So we have three plus B is equal to seven. Subtract three from both sides. You can see that B is coming out to four. And now we need to solve for C. Let's use this top equation, A plus B plus C equals seven. So that comes out to one plus four plus C equals seven. So this is five, if I subtract five, C is equal to two. So now we've got our A, B, and C. We can plug it into our equation here. We've got Y equals A, which is one. So this is just one X squared, uh, plus B, which is four. So plus four X plus C, which is equal to two. And that's our equation in standard form, our quadratic. Again, I like to check it sometimes just to see if I'm on the right track. So let's see, maybe let's pick this point here. So if y is 34, when x is four, is that true? Four squared is 16, plus four times four is 16, that's 32, plus two more is 34. Yes, it matches, so looks like we're good on that one. So great job uh, if you're able to do that problem. I'll put a video right there involving uh, additional problems that are similar to these if you want some additional practice. So follow me over to that video right there and we'll get some additional practice. I'll see you over there.